I tried to film this video the other day when both my kids were home and it went horribly wrong. So let's try again today. Daisy's at the playground with Steve. Steven is sleeping. Right over there. Let's hope he stays asleep. Let's get ready and talk about how to survive the fourth trimester. I already have my moisturizer on. It's this Kiel stuff that I use all the time. We're gonna go right in with the glow screen this business. I'm probably not going to walk through every product. If you see something you want me to talk about, just ask me in the comments and I'll tell you what it is. It's a very simple routine. I do it all the time. It's basically the same stuff over and over. So the fourth trimester is probably like the least talked about, I would feel like. Everybody's like, oh, first trimester, you're so sick and everything's the worst. True. Uh, second trimester is like, you're so glowy and you love your life. Sometimes true. Third trimester is like, you don't want to move. Nothing fits. Also true. A fourth trimester is like... <laughs> You just had a major surgery and or pushed a bowling ball out your you know what good luck don't lift anything here's your 12 pound baby have fun surviving you will get zero sleep that is a very cynical oversimplification of the fourth trimester it can have very beautiful snuggly sweet moments but for the most part it is tiring it is tiring it is tiring and it is about survival in my experience if you've had a different experience as always i would love to hear from you please send me your wisdom give me your thoughts so fourth trimester is from birth to 12 weeks so i figured this is the perfect time to talk about this because i'm almost through it last night he slept for one five hour stretch and one three hour stretch and let me tell you i feel like a new woman it's why i'm here today making this video because the night before he did not sleep maybe two hours then maybe one hour then maybe 45 minutes i planned to film and do all the stuff and i had no energy so i just vibed through the day until bedtime and really if you don't watch any <laughs> anything else in this video. I mean, it's about survival. I'm gonna give you some things that have really helped me because I love helping people. But at the end of the day, as we all know, you do what you gotta do to survive in the season that you're in. I'm gonna share four specific things that have really helped me. I'm hoping that somewhere in here there will be a nugget of wisdom or something that you can say, oh, that sounds pretty good. That's a good idea. And this isn't really in any particular order. I don't think one is more important than the other. I think they all kind of go together. But if there was one that stuck out more than others that I would say like this is the important one, then maybe it is this first one I'm gonna tell you, which is accept help however it comes to you. Obviously you set your boundaries and you know your limits and you know what you want and what you don't want. So I'm not saying accept any help regardless of circumstance, etc. But I'm saying accept help however it comes to you in the form of maybe it's someone trying to do a meal train for you. Maybe someone wants to come and do your dishes or hold the baby so you can shower, let you take a nap, watch your toddler so you can go outside for a walk with the baby, or physically come to your home and clean it and make you a meal. It looks like lots of different things. We had Steve's mom here for, I think, three weeks, five weeks, I can't even tell you, and it was so helpful. Then, like right after Steve's mom left, my parents came for 10 days, which was amazing. I know that not everybody has that luxury, but we are in a brand new state and a brand new place and it was huge to be able to have family members to come and be with us. For me, the main help was with Daisy because it's really hard for me in the transition. It was her and I for so long, for three and a half years basically. So it's really hard for me to go from like constant time with her to basically like handing over that time because I had to be with the baby. But it was huge for me to have people that I trust to be able to be with her, to love on her, and to help me feel like that transition was made smoother. I had some women from church that I barely know, God bless them, start a meal train for me and they had people bringing meals the first few weeks of Stephen's life and that was like another huge blessing to be able to just know that I could rely on that. Especially dinner because who wants to make dinner in peak perfect circumstances? Literally no one that I know. Stephen took three weeks off of work unpaid for us when he started. He was not eligible for leave yet. So we did have that time together. Like I said, set boundaries. If you don't want people coming over at a specific time or right away or whatever, you can communicate that. But if there are people who are really truly trying to help you and you trust them and you know it will make your life easier, I think for me that has made all the difference in surviving the fourth trimester is having help. Next thing. All the books, all the blogs, all the things I see are like, prepare physically, keep working out even when you're vomiting. But I think a huge thing too is to prepare mentally. I'm sorry, let me go back and say a lot of these things are like preparing for the birth, right? That's huge. Please do it. Prepare for birth as much as you can in whatever capacity that you can. The ways that I prepare for birth were I laid on my couch and I said, oh God, I hope this goes well. There's plenty of people who get, you know, mind over matter and they do all the things and they're like lifting crossfit weights into their millionth week couldn't be me <laughs> but prepare physically and mentally for postpartum that for me looked like having a space set up 
telling myself that I can be adaptable with whatever happens with the labor and delivery process and the birthing process. With Daisy, I never shared her birth story online. I just was like flying by the seat of my pants and it was COVID. I just was like so unprepared in so many ways, but I was mostly unprepared for postpartum. Now it's like get the baby registry, have the shower. All that stuff is so good. Yes, you're gonna need diapers and onesies and birth cloths and all of that, but preparing both physically and mentally for the fourth trimester postpartum period for yourself is huge. Who can you talk to? Who can be a listening ear in those first few days and maybe, you know, weeks when you have the baby blues, you may end up going through postpartum depression or anxiety. Like, is there someone that you know you can rely on, like a therapist or a person of contact, so that you're set up to be in the best place mentally and physically to handle the fourth trimester? Because I'm gonna be honest with you, I love being a mom. It is the greatest joy of my life, but it is also challenging to wake up every few hours, to breastfeed a baby, to stay awake to not lose your cool to not fall asleep like in the first few days we were because we had mom, Steve's mom this really helped we were taking shifts like nobody was sleeping because the baby just would not sleep when you put him down I was like how are we gonna sustain this and we didn't we ended up getting a snoo it's helping and he now sleeps in longer stretches as he gets older you know and he doesn't need to breastfeed every five seconds with your first sometimes you don't know about cluster feeding and you don't know if it's normal for a baby to want to be held and snuggled and not put down especially in the early days and that that's okay you know there's something wrong with you wanting to do that but also the real reality of you needing sleep and then it's also like breastfeeding can go really well and that has its own challenges and breastfeeding can absolutely not go well and that has its own challenges and all of this is just like in your face. Even the second time around, I'm having such a better postpartum than I did with Daisy. But it has still been such a challenge because now I have a toddler and a newborn to juggle. I personally stand by zero to one was a harder transition than one to two. And being prepared mentally and physically for postpartum, not just for birth and delivery, has been huge for me. Having some good shows lined up to watch that are not going to be like dramatic. I'm watching Ugly Betty right now. It's very light and fluffy, but also has some off-color jokes that I'm surprised or even allowed. The 2000s were a wild time. Books that you look forward to reading. Prioritizing taking a shower even when you don't want to. Self-care items. Time to get out and take a walk and breathe fresh air. I know everyone's like sleep when the baby sleeps. And like it's almost like physically impossible sometimes because sometimes when your baby sleeps like you want to do other things or you want to stare at your baby on your phone hang out with your husband or your toddler or you want to just like stare into the abyss and you can't fall asleep right because you're so hopped up on caffeine because you're trying to stay awake for the rest of the hours of the day but if you can take a nap take a nap things that helped me physically I had an abdominal binder that I use that is not the one from the hospital that is absolute trash. I had some pads and underwear that I knew was comfortable that wouldn't sit on my scar. I had a bed lower to the ground because we moved and we needed a new bed. So this might not be your circumstance. If you have a really high up bed, if you can either, you know, somehow get into a lower position or what I had to do the first time uh, was use a stool to get into bed. Having some books that I knew that I could pick up instead of just wanting to scroll my phone, please don't get me wrong, I do love to scroll and shop postpartum. I do love that, I do love that. that but that's also problematic for my bank account, so it was good for me to have some books and stuff on my bedside table to know that I could reach for those as a way to kind of like decompress and enjoy my time when I'm awake during like a late night feed. Having some good snacks and some good food. I didn't do a lot of food prep. My child also came early, so all the time and energy that I would have had for food prep, I think towards the end, was taken up by the kid was already here. So make sure you have like good nourishing foods that you enjoy. You can also have some foods that are junky that you just enjoy, I mean, please. I may have dipped a cookie in a can of frosting at 12 a.m. yesterday, okay? Having some prayer books and some journals also next to my bed is a way for me to feel like I'm in a better headspace and more prepared. And also knowing, I mean, this more than anything, Sometimes all the self-care and all the products and all the things don't help if you actually are suffering with PPD or PPA. And you might need to talk to someone, you might need medication. And just knowing that you have the freedom to say, hey, I need help. I hope that you have someone that you feel safe to communicate that to, or friends to check in with you or people to check in with, but don't be afraid to reach out. It's not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of strength for you to reach out and get help for yourself and for your family. So I say all of this as someone who has dealt with PPA and had to go to therapy for it. I've not dealt with postpartum depression beyond the baby blues, but I have friends who have and it made a huge difference for them to be able to reach out and get the help that they need. And there is nothing wrong with that. Take all of this with a grain of salt. If you need more help than flowery bath bombs and supportive undergarments, 
that's the reality and that's okay. Some products and self-care things that did help me were having some like bath items that I really look forward to. Hold on, let me show you this bath oil that I have. Okay, some things that make me feel bougie and like enjoy my little self-care moments that I get. This bath oil is so nice. This Earth Balance nipple, not Earth Balance, that's butter. <laughs> This Earth Mama Nipple Butter, I mean it's all the same words. Argan Oil from Trader Joe's, I use this on my stretch marks all throughout pregnancy and then I'm using it postpartum as well. Um, this is literally like $6 at Trader Joe's and I love it so much. Okay, this LV little manual breast pump that goes on, I have like a short about this that I linked this to. It goes right on your boob and it helps drain the milk out of your breast that is not being nursed on and it saves, it's like a milk collector, it saves a ton of time and just like your shirt's not completely soaked. These nipple shields from Saris Chill, I think it is. Well, they are like colored when they're not on your boob and then they turn the color of your skin when they are on your boob. So like if I can't find it in the bed, like the clear ones, now I can find it. This is the belly wrap that I use from Belly Bandit. It's like the Lux belly wrap. I really love it. it. Really helps me feel like supported in my back and stuff. It's been a huge help. I have these postpartum leggings from Target that I'll link in the comments. They're my favorite. They're like $34. They're so comfortable. I've used them with Daisy and with Steven. I'm trying to do my mascara in here. I don't know how it's gonna go. Uh oh. Hold, oh, please. Gotta get the babe. <gasps> Who's <is> that? <gasps> is that my baby? Oh, he's cute. Come on, Kuchong. Come on, Kuchong. What is this? You wanna be part of my video? So we're doing this now together. <coughs> oh no, you <laughs> sad guy. Hold on. Gotta feed you. Okay, we're gonna latch him and then we're gonna continue. Products that make your life easier, self-care items that make your life easier, systems that help you feel organized, whatever's gonna help you. I'll try to link everything that I use like the most or that's been like the most comfortable for me with a C-section. If you have something that you love that you've used, please share it with us. Okay, bye -bye. In addition to the fun, fancy self-care items, other things that have really been helpful is like stool softeners continuing to take my prenatal iron supplements. Or no one told me about postpartum night sweats, but dang, those are some sweats. Babies don't need a ton of things. You need diapers, whatever, however you're gonna do that. You need food, so whether that's formula or breast milk, some clothes. So I would say try to focus on getting things for yourself or adding things for yourself to your registry, things that you know are gonna help you because I just think far too often we prepare for the baby with all this stuff and we just don't really prepare ourselves or prepare the mom to feel like she's equipped to handle postpartum, which can be an absolutely wild ride even if it's not your first one. Fourth thing that I would say that really helps me is embracing your new rhythm. Oftentimes I have super high expectations about how I want things to go and I think it's good to have goals and dreams and hopes but I also think it's really really important to slow down in the postpartum time. I know there's so many people who are like six weeks I'm back at it I'm lifting weights I'm doing whatever. It's great if that is you that is not me. I am very much like I'm in my bed Obviously like I'm doing healthy things to help me move around and be physical and whatever. I did go trick or treating five days post C-section. In hindsight, maybe not the best use of my time and energy, but it was fun and it got me out and I was trying to prioritize movement and you know, doing something with Daisy. I would say whatever kind of is like a balance for you while also just prioritizing slowing down. He is 11 weeks old, almost 12 weeks old, and I am just now starting to feel like I'm getting back to myself. With Daisy, it took me years. And that's largely in part to having like a really difficult recovery. With Steven, who has been pretty quote unquote good slash typical, he's very chill, he eats well, he sleeps like a baby sleeps, he's starting to do a few longer stretches. He's not overly fussy, but he likes, you know, being held and being with us. He's just like what I would think a, you know, quintessential baby to be. It's still taking me weeks and weeks to feel more like myself. And mainly I think today is because I got some sleep. Slow way down. And I'm not saying lower expectations in the sense of like, you do what you feel up to. But if you're someone like me who is go, 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 just, just release the pressure on yourself to go is all I'm saying. It's okay to go to bed at 7 p.m. It's okay to say no to stuff. And the last thing I would say, it's about loving your family and loving yourself and getting through the day. I really enjoy the newborn stage, even with all of its challenges, even with Daisy's challenges. I loved it so much. I feel like I was so nostalgic for that time. I really looked forward to Steven. I was really hopeful for it and it's been better 
than I even imagined and than it was before. It's also okay if the newborn stage is not for you. If you are fighting to the nail to get through it to an easier stage, to a more normal time frame for you, that's okay too. Whatever you have to do to survive is what you gotta do. And just know that you're not alone. There's so many mothers in this with you. Also up at one in the morning, also up at three in the morning, doing what they have to do to love on their babies and their families and themselves. I saw this thing recently on Instagram where it was like these cloistered nuns and someone was, you know, going to report about them and they had had permission to be with these cloistered nuns. She had seen the schedule for their prayer for the day and there was like a midnight prayer. But when she asked one of the sisters about it, she said, yeah, that's our mother hour. Like we get up and pray with all the mothers that we know are up in the middle of the night. And I thought it was so beautiful to know that there's women around the world praying for me that I don't even know that are up with me when they don't even physically have to be. And that's been huge to think about um, in those morning hours that can often be lonely. I just wanna encourage you. Oh my gosh, I'm crying. <laughs> know that you're not alone. Whoo, hold on. To know that you're not alone and it's okay to feel however you're feeling about this time of life, whether you're really loving it or it's really difficult for you. I just wanna say that I think you're doing great. So, as always, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for listening to me. I appreciate you being here. I think you're wonderful. Would love for it to be a resource if someone stumbles upon it, a new mom, a mom who's expecting, a seasoned mom who wants to learn something new. So if you have anything to add to the things that I've said, please comment, share this with somebody that you think would find it beneficial. Other than that, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye. Just popping back in to say that I saw myself on an Instagram video and I did that entire video with a backwards sweater and I didn't blend in the bronzer on my nose, okay? So, you're doing great, you're doing better, you're doing better.